Hey everyone! Well, I'm finally back now to show you how to uh, make the necklace. This is the finale, the final, um, the final video in this series of Summer Royalty. So this is the brace, or is the necklace. Now, earlier in the video, previous videos, I told you in my last video, I think it was, to make nine components just for your necklace and to join them, except for your very last one. Now, um, let me just show you. With every single... Um, I have... Out of the bracelet there's the bracelet there's the earrings I keep everything in uh, baggies so they don't ever tarnish and I keep uh, tarnish papers in them as well so I made the earrings I made two rings and I still have one Rivoli left out of a package of each entire um, color so I got I had a package of the summer blue, the peony pink, the mint green, the azure blue, and the the coral, the light coral one. So I chose I I can still make one more ring, and what I would end up making my last color left was a light coral. So that's I could make another ring if I wanted to, but then I would have to get into to more product to complete it with the gem duos seed beads out of two packages of seed beads for this entire thing that is what's left out of two eight gram packs of the rose galvanized rose um so as you can see uh you got a lot of uh pieces a lot of components um and the extra last color i had that did not have two of to put in my necklace was this azure blue because I chose to do the earrings in the azure blue so I used up two of my azure blues in this let me come up a wee bit closer so you guys can see how beautiful this is so yeah I used up wait my lights aren't even on here that could be the problem okay here we go so yeah I used up the two azure blues well I can see what I'm doing in the earrings I used a mint green in the ring and a peony pink in the ring so one ring is a little bit bigger than the other so it's because I used one less uh, gem duo in the band and again there's a video on the ring there's a video on the earrings there's a video on the bracelet and there's the video on the necklace and that is this one here okay so let me get all these out of my way. I absolutely, I mean it, I seriously love these earrings. And you know, these would look nice in any Rivoli. doesn't matter what kind of Rivoli you use. These will still be very stunning. All right, so I left my tails on these so I can show you how to finish off this end here okay because I want I wanted the end to match the way we did the earring so you want this to be the same you want everything to be the same if it's going to be a set and this last component that I made in the azure blue that's going to go in the middle here I'm not sure yet exactly how I'm going to attach them but they are going to go between the two pink then I did the two green then I did the two blue and then I did the two coral so that's how my necklace is going to go Feel free to mix your colors whatever way you want. This is just the way I'm doing it, and this is the way I'm showing you how to do it is the way I've done it. Now, for this necklace, where did I put the chain? You are going to need um, three, um, four jump rings, sorry. And you guys know me. I'm only using these big jump rings because they are thick. They are unbelievably thick and they're not easy to um, pull apart especially when you're hanging weight like this you want you don't want a regular jump ring that's so easily to pull apart so this is why I use these ovals and in the 18 gauge I also have the swivel lobster class in a two-pack on my on my um, 
um, Etsy shop and I absolutely love these swivels because they don't ever allow your piece to tangle or you know you got to put it on a certain way you don't even have to worry about that now I am going to use a um, I always use one of these oval jump rings for a closure to because it's nice and big for these large lobster clasps and you're going to need some chain now I do have chain in stock I just don't know what I did with it I pulled it out oh there it is I did buy chains specifically for this necklace and we have 250 inches of this in stock and it is the figure eight chain um, I absolutely think this is gorgeous it's dainty and it's going to look absolutely stunning on this piece now I only want this necklace to be about 20 inches you don't want it to be much bigger than that because when this hangs down you don't want it to hang into your shirt you want it to hang nice on your chest okay so this is my you can make it as long as you want so let me finish show you how to do this end here let's get this part finished and then we can work on adding this here and finding a way to v-shape this uh, i've got an idea how i want to do that and i want to add um, another Monty in there to dangle that down so the more bling the better <laughs> is my my philosophy so let me just grab a night another light here because I need lots of light on the situation so I don't have a lot of shadows so yeah this is available in the shop oh my god I just absolutely love this so you're not going to need a lot you're going to need two pieces but when you purchase this from me um, it will come in one solid piece and you will just cut it to the length that you want okay I'm not going to cut you a bunch of pieces now let me get a needle out because my other ones were so bent and we will start working on the finishing of the necklace part here this component here what I did is I tied off in here okay I always like to do that just because I'm afraid if the necklace breaks you don't want your whole component to fall apart okay that's my philosophy in that one so let me just thread this on so you can see I'm coming out at the top because that's where I tied my knots knots and I need to go back out this end here so I'm exiting out of these three here let me come up some closer so you guys can really see what I'm doing okay so I'm nice and close you can see my yucky hands from paint all right I am going to need a Monty and my seed beads so I'm just going to dump them and I'm going to try so hard to stay in frame so I'm going in this direction so I'm just going to work my way around the top here and if you find it too tight you might want to get a 12 size 12 beading needle and I'm finding this really tight and this is where I'm going to bend this knot out of my new needle <laughs> there we go it was just hitting into another bead so I'm just going to go down into the um, see this middle bead here this middle one where we joined I'm going to work my way down and then work my way wait I'm going to work my way down here so I'm just going to oops <laughs> so let me just get it is getting pretty tight in here because I've been through I've tied knots that might not be a good idea Rubes yeah there's knots in there that was not smart I can't even get through one bead yeah we're gonna break them all right so I'm gonna back up one bead and I'm gonna go down and work my way around on the outside it's a lot safer than trying to break my beads here so you might want to do the same thing so make sure you're coming out of the middle bead that you worked out of so you can just drop down into this crystal as well and into those two beads well, I see one but I'll work my way into the second 
Okay, and then I'm going to work my way into the Gem Duo, which is going to be a little tough. As long as you pull the beads out of your way, you should be fine. Or I may end up getting a size 12 beading needle because these are getting pretty, pretty tight. And thank you for being patient with me. I needed a break again. I just needed to go to camp. My husband and I were on holidays for two weeks and our last day is today actually. And then we go back to work on Tuesday because Monday is a civic holiday. Oh my goodness, I can't even get into the gem duo. Wow, okay. Move some beads out of the way. Grab it from this side maybe. Yes, okay. So that'll work. Go across this. And, oops, ouch. Into the gem duo. And I need to go through these three here. On the side. I'm working on the side. Is it too blurry? I hope not. Maybe if I back up a wee bit. Whoops. A little bit. Okay, into the gem duo. Challenging part. And this is the last difficult one I think I have to go through. Yeah. And then into these three beads. Okay, and then into the gem duo, which is easy. All right, and you want to be exiting right through all three of these seed beads, okay, on this end here. So I'm on the end of my actual component, right? So you want to pick up two seed beads, a Monty, and I think it's 11, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. You want to pick up 11 seed beads. Okay, so you want to pick up two seed beads, a Monty, and 11 seed beads. And bring that down. And now you want to go through your Monty on this side, from left to right. Okay? From left to right. So your Monty stays upward. And then you want to enter into the three beads again. Whoops. Like so. Okay, so go through those three beads on your base, and there's the start of your, oopsies, sorry, 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 forgot two seed beads. Hopefully I didn't snag anything. Of course I did. Alright, let's just pull the needle off instead of dicking around with that. And then just pull it out. <sighs> silly, silly, silly. Okay. And I already bent my needle. <laughs> Doesn't take much. Good thing I have oh, these needles are cheap. But these pony beading needles are my absolute favorite. And it's the only needles I've ever used. I've tried tulips. They don't live up to what they say they are. Because I've bent them and I've broke them. Very easily. And I don't use John James beading needles because they bend just as easy as the pony beading needles do and they break. I rarely ever break a pony beading needle and that is the God spoken truth. All right, so I'm going back up through the, the two seed beads before the Monty and through the Monty, okay? Then you're going to come up on this side. You're going to go through the first two seed beads like this. Okay, then you're going to go across and down these two seed beads on the other side before the Monty, like that. Okay, and pull that together. Now go up it again and go through this and reinforce that, that lock right there. Just kind of locking four seed beads together and back down. Ouch. 
okay give it a good nice tight pull and now you're going to go back up and you're going to go through four seed beads all right on that side just four seed beads you're going to skip this bead here one bead and you're going to go into the next bead now what you want to do is pull this bead up and pull your thread tight so this bead sticks out in a square like a point like that okay now you're going to skip the next seed bead and you're going to go through the next four over here like that whoopsies and again you're going to pull this seed bead out of the corner before you pull it super tight and then give it a good tight pull and there's your shape of your closure and now you're just going to go through your monte and we're going to reinforce this and we're going to go through all these one more time because you know it's it's an end I, I reinforce three times anyway regardless of what part of the bracelet necklace earrings whatever I'm making regardless of what it is I reinforce okay and one more time now so we're going to go up through the two and the monte and just so you know we got in stock oh, I, these are the cheaper Montes these are not I think they're Chinese crystals but they're absolutely beautiful I hate Chinese beads but these Montes I have been using these for years and I have never been disappointed with these Montes now we've got a whole ton of colors in them in 50 per pack for eight bucks and that's 50 Montes that will last you a long time if, unless you make a lot of projects with Montes. So make sure you go up through only the first four beads, skipping that outer bead and going into the middle one here. Okay. And give it a good tight pull. And that pushes that bead out in the corner. Skipping that one and going through the next four beads here. Whoops. like that but you guys have to see the colors we got in the Montes I'll be using them I love using Montes and because the Preciosa and the um, um, Swarovski ones are really expensive um, I give you guys an alternative to using the Chinese crystal ones because they are just as beautiful and they're box shaped the other ones go crisscross, so they lay a little flatter. These stick up a bit, which is stunning to me. And I've never been disappointed with them. Now, their bicones, forget it. Yuck. Never. Okay, so look at that. We've got our ends completed, and they're matching. Okay, so now I want to tie this thread off, and unfortunately I'm going to have to tie it off on this outer edge here so I'm gonna go through this gem duo here I'm not even gonna bother trying to go through this top layer because of what happened I already tied off in there so I don't want to do it again I just want to get through the gem duo and this one here for some reason it's the hardest is where the single there we go stones are so I am going to tie a half hitch knot here actually doubled so we're gonna go through once make sure you pull your threads underneath the bead that you're snagging and twice and give it a good tight pull and I'm gonna go through these three beads here oh, geez the knots already in there okay in there Oops, snagging my Monty. Oh, snagging my bale. Have you, whatever <laughs> you want to call it. I call it a bale because that's basically what it's going to be used for. All right, so I am going to tie a half hitch knot here, but I'm not going to tie one by the crystal. I just don't trust tying knots by crystals. If I can avoid it, I will. If I can't, then I then I do it. But okay, there's another one. And then we'll enter into the gem duo underneath there like that. Okay. And into 
these three beads here. Actually, I'm going to go through two and I'm tying my third knot because this is going to give me havoc. But as long as I have three knots, I know I'm, I'm good. That is if I can get through. There we go. All right, so one and two and give it a good tight pull. And now I'll go through um, this bead here and I'm going to go up through the top just because it's so hard to get through there and I'm not going to take forever to get up there. So there we go. Go up there. through some beads here and see if I can go through any of these yep and I'm gonna end right there okay and then we will trim that off and I'm going to leave a little tail and I'm going to burn that tail right to the crystal there we go all right so we have this part done. Isn't this going to be gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous? Now, where is my other component? Right here. So we're going to have to thread our needle on here. Now I have an idea as to how I want to do this, but not 100% sure. I need to grab another Monty. So these are how the box Montys come. So that $8 is Canadian, by the way. I don't know how much that is in American. There might be the odd flaw in one, but I always catch it. And when I'm packing them, if I catch it, I pull it out. So anyway, I think that's a good deal. The Preciosa ones are quite expensive. So, All right, so I need you need two more Montes now because we're going to um, join this one. which is the azure blue one in my case. So let me just check. Yeah. All right. So now we are going to go through this Monty between the two pink. Excuse me. One sec, please. Okay, sorry about that. Now, while I was out there, I had to get myself a, a hot, hot cup of coffee. Mm. And it's mocha. It's so good. Okay, so we're going to do basically the same thing. Only thing different is we're going to be going into this Monty on a diagonal. Okay, so let me just show you. I'm going to pick up two seed beads. Monty two seed beads. Now make sure you're between the two pink or whatever color you used. And you're going to go through this Monty. Now let me make sure I'm going through it the right way. Let me put it down because you need to go through it this way. So from left to right you can see the seed bead kind of gets in the way but you can just push the seed bead out of the way. I did it already once to make sure it would work. I just don't want to snag the seed beads like that. Okay, so go through the Monty on a diagonal. Okay, like that. Pull it carefully. Now you're going to pick up two more seed beads and you're going to go through your Monty from left to right so it stays standing up. Very, very important. Okay, and you're going to pick up two more seed beads and now you're going to go through your component, all three seed beads on your component. Okay, where you came out but you're going through the other side. So like this. And then give that a nice little tight pull and let's have a look at what that looks like. What is going on here? Here we go. Fix that. 
all right so that is how your your component will hang off of here now you need to reinforce it I kid you not so gonna be a little tricky going through all of these beads but the right way okay now I'm just finding it easier to flip it over and go through it on the back side a lot easier because you can push those out of your way those seed beads okay now you want to go down through these two seed beads here and back into your component you put on like so and try to catch the other two It'll be a lot easier like that and you know me I'm gonna go through it one more time so through those three on your and give everything a nice tight pull okay so that's how your necklace will sit I honestly don't even think I need to put anything in here but I'm going to just for because I think it's gonna look pretty and it will close these together so one more time okay hope I'm staying in frame through the two through the Monty and through the two seed beads tight tight pull flip it over and go through your Monty on a diagonal and it's getting easier now because you've literally trained those beads to get out of the way <laughs> at least I think I did and down through these two give it a good tight pull and now you're gonna go back through your Monty through the two seed beads on here and through your three seed beads on your component like so okay so that looks stunning now like I said oh I just love this guys I do oh my god I just love it it's just so beautiful this should have been a bead and button magazine <laughs> one of my uh, but the thing is, I would have entered in beta button, but I don't know how to write PDF files. I don't know how to write patterns. And I don't have the time to write patterns for all my pieces because I just don't. Now, I want to work my way back up somehow into here, into this component again. So we're going to go up through our Montes. We're not going to tie off because I want to add another Monty in that middle and kind of pull those together and I'm trying to think of a way to do it so let me just work my way up first now flip it over because you got to work from the back side which is a lot easier yes okay make sure my thread does not snag on anything and actually no I don't need I can go right through to this side here this is the side I want to be on the outside so just go right back up and go into the top hole so now what I'm going to do is figure out a way how it's gonna look nice in joining it together so I think I don't know all right let me just have a little think so what you want to do I think we're going to do it this way okay so this you want to watch very carefully because this is going to be very intricate you're going to go up to these two beads here okay so go up the two beads here like this so let me put this down and show you now I better put it in my hand I've come out of these two beads above the Monty here. So I'm going to, to join it with the beads before the bicones. Okay? See where I'm at? I'm right here. Now I want to pick up, let me see, two seed beads. And I want to exit into this seed bead here. Right here beside, 
right the one before the crystal. So just in this seed bead here. Okay, don't go in the crystal. Oops. It wants to go in the crystal. There we go. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks good. All right, now you're going to take two seed beads, a Monty, two seed beads, and you're going to go directly across into the next component into the seed bead below the bicone here. So you want to go into this one here, like so. Oopsies. All right. Then you're going to pick up two seed beads. Now you're going to go into your Monty from left to right. Like that. Pulling it nice and tight, picking up two seed beads. <clears throat> Sorry. And, whoops, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, nope, because I'm exiting differently. Can't do it this way not going to work. So I'm going to get back out. I went into this seed bead the wrong way. <clears throat> you want to go in the opposite direction. So it can't be this way. It has to go on a diagonal. So let me get out of this seed bead. Now I'm coming out of this seed bead on the right side of it, on this side. So the one over here, you want to go on this side, okay, and exit that way. Or our Monty won't stand straight up. Then it snagged on there. There we go. All right, now we're in business. Now pick up two seed beads and go through the Monty, okay, on the other hole. Pick up two more seed beads. And now go back into that one seed bead, this one here, before the crystal, like that. And then we'll just go ahead and reinforce that. <clears throat> and we'll finish over on this side. We'll work our way down, adding the two seed beads in, and just look at how stunning your piece is. Actually, I don't think you should put. we should put two seed beads in there. <clears throat> I think we only need one. I'm going to take this all out. <sighs> yeah, that's two is too many. So let me pull this out. So, like I said, it's trial and error, and it's going to pucker if you put two in there. So let's do this all over again. All right, so I'm just going to leave one seed bead on. Sorry guys, but <laughs> I didn't, re this isn't a remake. <laughs> I never did it. And I'm just doing it as we go. Okay, so we'll start again. Not a big deal. <clears throat> so pick up your Monty. One seed bead and make sure you go in it the right way this time. <laughs> Ruby, go in it that way. Okay. Let me see if this pulls it any tighter together, where it's not going to buckle. I don't even think we need a freaking seed bead. You know that? And we're not going to use a seed bead. <clears throat> so forget the seed beads. We're just going to do the Monty. All right. So let me remove all the seed beads and just pick up the Monty and see how that's going to look. What I'm trying to do is pull it together so your necklace sits and hangs beautifully. So I'm coming out of that <clears throat> seed bead before the crystal, picking up my Monty. I just hope it doesn't leave any any um, thread showing. And going through this one. This direction. There we go. No, it won't leave any threads, really. No. So now you're just going to go back through the Monty, but on the other in the other two holes. Okay. There we go. That is what I was looking for. So go back into the seed bead. And 
and now we'll just go through this a few times and tighten it all up nicely and there's your Monty's gonna sit in there beautifully and that will tie your necklace together see that's basically what I was looking for without it puckering in there I want all three of these Monty's to sit beautifully <coughs> to have a sparkle all right let's reinforce all right so let's go back through the Monty back through the seed bead come on don't give me a hard time like that just be very careful because it's so easy to snag your thread and I've done it a few times there is a wee 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 bit of thread showing I think nope not at all Okay, back into this and I'm going to go through it one more time that way it's good and secure and then we can tie off and then we want to finish over here because we want to go down that side okay and I don't think I'm going to be able to go that way because I'll just have to cheat. <sighs> Shoot. Okay. Through your Monty. And make sure you you check and make sure you didn't come with your needle through the Monty base and the crystal because I've done that too. <laughs> So now I'm going to cheat and I'm going to go straight across on a diagonal into the Monty because I want to go down into that uh, seed bead so I can add the two over there like I did on the other side so it's all even. So I want to go down this seed bead in this direction. So just basically cheated, that's all. And now you're going to add your two seed beads in there so pick up two seed beads. All right, and then go down the two seed beads adjacent to the Monty here. So you're going to go into these two. And I'm just going to go straight through the Monty like I just went through the... Oh, I see where it's snagged. That's how easy it is to snag, guys, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get that out. How am I? Fix that. Now, that one in these two, through your Monty. Okay. So we have this, right? Is that how it's supposed to be? Let me look. Uh, you know what? I don't think, I don't think it's wise to add yeah, we're only going to add one seed bead because two of them is too much. And we're going to go down this one. That's what we're going to do. So let me go back out. Oh, I probably snagged something. I sure did. very very intricate yeah you know um it's really hard to see so let's only use one seed bead because two is way too many so just one because there's two there so this is what we're gonna do <coughs> take it off i need drink coffee oh, it's very good okay try this again <laughs> Trial and error, and this is what it's like to design. You're pulling your needle and thread out constantly. Constantly. All right, so 
Remember when we went up this component here, we added two seed beads. You can see two seed beads here before we hit that seed bead by the bicone. So you're going to skip the first one. You're going to go into this one here, placing, oh geez, don't snag on these Montes. Placing only one seed bead in there and then going down these two on this side so it's even. Okay, hopefully you can catch what I just did. Very, very intricate this part. And I'm very sorry, but there's no other way to show you. All right, so let me pull this now and check that out and see if that's a little more bearable. So why is this one here? I'm not liking this at all. This one here, I don't like where it, the way it's sitting. Okay, let's not add a seed bead at all then. Because this is annoying. So we're just going to go down those two seed beads. That's all we're going to do. The heck with it. All right. Sorry. If it doesn't look right to me, I'm not going to keep doing it. All right. So when you came out of this Monty here, you added two seed beads. You came through the first two seed beads. You added two. So what you're going to do is go down those two seed beads and don't pick up any because as you can see, it was giving me a problem. Just make sure your thread does not snag on anything like that. And then now go down these two seed beads, adding no seed beads in between. It's just going to be a, oh, that went right through. There we go. Careful. Now let me, there we go. Gosh, that was difficult. But there we go. Do you see what I did now? So there's two seed beads and two on top. And you cannot see any threads there. As you can see, there's no threads. Whoa, sorry. As you can see, these two seed beads are the two we added in with the Monty. Okay? And now we're just going to come out of here. going to tie off. And we're going to add our chain. And then this necklace is done. So I'm just going back through those. I love this guys. I just absolutely love how this sits. How it, oh my god, it's so beautiful displayed. I wish you could see. For those of you that purchased um, all the products to make this, ah, you guys know just how beautiful and stunning this piece really is. So, now it's time to tie off. So, I'm going to get out of this Monty area. And I'm just getting back into my component. And I'm going to start tying off in the component. Okay. Staying far away from stuff. Now, hopefully I wasn't out of camera frame. By God. I pray I wasn't. I didn't keep looking up. All right. This is the fun part. <laughs> Pushing these out of the way. Like that. And getting into these two seed beads. Well, I'm going to tie a knot right after the crystal and going into the seed bead with it. So, I'm going to tie surgeon's knot double through there, pulling it tight, and then entering the seed bead. So that'll pull it into the seed bead. And then through the gem dual, which you want to just do one seed bead at a time. There we go. And then I'm going to go through two seed beads here 
and then I'm going to tie off right there between the set of three here that we put on. So once and twice, pull it tight, and now through the seat bead, whoops, and through the gem duel moving that seed bead out of the way so you can get in there. All right, we're going to do this one more time. And I'm going to tie it right at the end of the crystal again on this one. Through twice. Okay, now I'm just going to go up and up to the component. go up here, run my thread through some beads to these two here and through here and I'm going to end it. And that's good and tied and secured. All right, so I'm going to clip it and burn it. So pretty guys I can't even tell you all right so that's left of two packages of uh, the gem door the seed beads okay so now we need to figure out how much chain we want to put on here so let's get a length on this component on this thing here oops so the length of it is it is roughly nine and a half inches and we want it to be 20 inches I think so we want to have um, oh I still need the ruler we want to have don't forget we've got a closure which is going to take up a good let's see how big this will be so it's almost one inch so it's going to be three quarters of an inch so we're going to need, I would say, because this is nine and what? Hold it to there. Straight, straight. Actually, I gotta measure it from the flat side because that's this component here is making it difficult for me. So it's basically nine and a half inches. So we need ten and a half more. So what we should do is use this for a good half inch because it's a little over half inch and you're going to need 10 inches of cable cord. So let me cut 10 inches off and that's if you guys want to purchase 10 inches for yours you can purchase just 10 inches. It won't cost you very much. I think it's, I don't know, 42 cents Canadian an inch or something like that. All right. So, I want exactly enough loops on each side. So, let me go. I'm going to cut five inches, but first, let me cut this. Um, you got to cut the figure eight off so you have just the loop. Okay. When you get yours, this loop will be cut off, it'll be ready to go. All right, so we just want the chain, and we want five inches for each side. So I want them both to be the same. So there's one. So right to there. So I'm going to cut this figure eight piece out, and I'm going to cut another piece exactly the same size. Okay. That one's gone, and this one's not quite gone. So just cut the little figure eight off that's between them. I just think this chain is gorgeous, and it is silver plated, so it's the only way it's affordable. Now I'm going to take my needle. This is how I'm going to get the exact same length here. 
And if you want me to cut these into five inch strips exactly like this, like I'm doing, um, I'll do that for you. Just leave a note in the PayPal or however you pay in the memo there. And I will uh, cut yours into half, two halves for you. Save you from doing it. All right. So we want to cut our link right there. Not cut. There we go. So if that's if you guys purchase this chain from me, make sure you leave a little note in the memo saying please cut into two pieces for me and I will cut them in even lengths. Same as mine for you. Okay. So, now let's get this back in its bag because I don't want it to tarnish. Don't leave anything exposed to air. And now there is our two pieces. Perfect. Let me just throw these pieces in the garbage. So now let's get our jump rings opened. Let's let's actually attach our um, lobster clasp. So I'm going to do the lobster clasp and hook it onto here, like so. Always twist your jump rings open, especially these ones, and then close them until you hear them click. Now, I kind of like to give them a little squish this way because that way they are good and tight in there and nothing's going to come out on that side. So there's one. So we need to get this off because we need this jump ring for the other end. You want to open your jump ring, give it a little twist like so. Add your other piece of chain in there. All right, and close this up nice. Like so until you hear it kind of click. And then give it a little squish in the middle. That way it, this chain is never going to come out. Okay. All right. Now we are ready to add our chain to our necklace, which I'm so excited to do. Okay. Now we're going to add the jump ring in there. And we will add this piece here. And again, like I told you, it doesn't matter which way you add that. <laughs> your lobster is swivel. So you don't have to worry about that, okay? And then close this up nice. Give it a little tight squeeze while it's still in your other pliers. And seal that nice and tight. So the one side of your chain's on. And these um, are come in a package of 10 on my store. And there's links below for everything. Okay, open that up. And your other side. And in your chain. Move that down. Okay, close her up nice. Hold that and give it a little little squeeze and there we go let me try this on you're not going to be able to see it but I want to see if it's long enough or if it's short enough see how it hangs oh my god this is gorgeous oh my gosh yes it it's perfect length I wish you could see it but I ain't showing myself so sorry <laughs> it does fit my fat neck it'll fit that's very nice the 20 inches is a perfect length so let me get these out of the way so I can display the whole piece this is stunning guys get that out of the way oh my word Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, guys. This is just stunning, stunning, stunning. So there is the necklace. 
and I'm going to zoom out. Zoom out, zoom out. Okay, so there's the necklace with the chain. Just stunning. Here's your bracelet. Here's your rings. Your rings. And the earrings. Inside here, like that. There we go. Everything. Beautiful, beautiful set. Now, for those of you that um, know how much all of this stuff costed, wasn't cheap, uh, to, to buy all the supplies for this, um, this here and all the work that went into this, I am putting this entire set on my Etsy shop. So whoever wants to purchase the entire set already made for a size 8 bracelet, a 20 inch chain, two rings and the earrings, I'm going to list it on my Etsy for $150 Canadian already made and it will come in a bag um, on on cardstock in a bag with um, anti-tarnish strips in it so n this never tarnishes so it prevents it from tarnishing anyway guys this has been an absolutely uh, most stunning piece I've enjoyed making since God knows how long um, once in a while I put out a really good piece and other times I don't <laughs> but let me show you so this is this is it guys this is the whole entire world summer royalty set my god it's absolutely phenomenal how beautiful how stunning this piece is you know anyway I'm gonna push this out of the way and show you what I have for next week's tutorial you guys are going to pull it when you see this this here is the new iris duos that are coming out from Potomac Bead Company and this is what I worked on to um, use these beads focus so here is next week's tutorial uh, hopefully the supplies will be in next week I can do it this is done in the Aztec gold with uh, a silver closure I'm using galvanized silver beads and I'm using rose Montes in this one not the box Montes Okay, so I wanted a little more flatter look to this, but these iris duos, this bracelet is beautiful. It's beautiful on your wrist. It's stunning. Um, I just love it. And I'm working on another project for the following week, which is some wire wrapping. And I haven't got it quite down pat the way I want to do this. But this is basically um, how I'm working, and this is going to be uh, a bangle, so that when it you close it, these two will just hook in here like this. Something like that, not like that. Whoopsies, that wasn't how it was supposed to go. Anyway, I'm just, this is really in the early stages, <laughs> as you can see, uh, of how I want to do this. I'm still not sure if this is the way I want to do it, but I do want to do these loops, because I just think it's stunning, and maybe hang some... A dangles off of here some crystals fire polish or something like that so it's just a really pretty bangle right now it is way too big and this was supposed to they were supposed to hook in like this something like this oh I got this turned the wrong way somehow I don't know anyways they would have closed like that it's just a really pretty bangle that I'm working on and that's going to be, all this wire is going to be available, it is available in my store, but I'm just working with gold because I hate gold. And this is what, I don't care if I ruin this because gold is not my color. Uh, but the rose gold that I have, oh my god. <laughs> so I want to kind of do it in three colors. So I've got the copper, the gold, the rose gold, the silver. I don't know, I'm going to probably try doing this in three different colors just to get like a tri-gold to it and see how that that turns out but that's basically how I'm going to be doing it um, I'm going to be adding beads here here like I didn't space this enough because I didn't use a spacer which I should have so anyway I just want to show you some upcoming projects that I'm working on I want to do a little bit of wire wrapping this is next week's if the uh, iris duos come in this is such a stunning piece and these are the preciosa rose montes which as you can see are as sparkly as these ones so 
Anyway, guys, thank you so, so much for being here with me. And I guess I'll see you guys next week. Have a safe and blessed weekend. And God bless you all. Bye, everyone.